images that I always have when, when I hear the word is like somehow you're in the middle of the seesaw, you know, and if you step on one side or the other, you're just, it's all going to mess up. And so I think that it's a word that actually causes a lot of stress to even consider the notion of balance. But I think that what we're aiming for is a sense of that we're, we're, what we're doing with our lives is working for us and that whatever parts we want to have in our lives in terms of relationships and work and time for ourselves and all of that, we're more or less getting to have. I don't think it's possible to get rid of stress in our lives. It's a natural part of life. Things happen and we must respond to them. Things that we didn't expect or even things that are happening that are good are physiologically caused stress in the body. So it's not about stress really, it's about distress. Stress that causes us harm or anxiety, um, that turns on the fight or flight mechanism. Those are the things that we really need to learn how to deal with. Stress affects our productivity by diminishing our capacity to think well. Because what happens when we say stress, what we're talking about is that our brains have turned on the fight or flight mechanism. And when the mechanism turns on, the stronger that it's on, the less able we are to think. Because the part of our brains, the amygdala, that, that turns on in the stress response actually captures the thinking part of our brain and doesn't allow it to happen. So this is a good thing when your kid is about to run, be run over by a car. You don't want your brain to be going, do you think I should go rescue them? It just, you just act, right? And that's a good thing. But the problem is, is that most of the things that are causing stress for us are not those immediate things that we actually, that are physical, that we actually need to respond to as a threat. And so instead, the fact that we are unable to think as clearly as we want to under stress is really what diminishes productivity. The other thing that causes the loss of productivity in, under stress is because it, it decreases our immune system. So the stress response says to the brain, um, wait a minute, we got to survive right this minute. And so we can't, we've got to marshal all our forces to get ready to run or to fight or to freeze. And as a consequence, the immune system actually gets suppressed. Our T cells diminish in quantity because the body's going, forget long-term survival, we gotta have life or death survival right now. And so if that mechanism is turned on too long, you're, we're walking around with, that, with our immune systems not fully working. So that's why we get sicker. And that also, of course, influences productivity. Absolutely. And I think it's an absolute key to, to existing in this planet, in this time and age that we're in. And all of the demands on our attention and all of the uh, challenges that we have in life. To me, the number one thing a human being needs to do in order to be successful at work and at home is to learn how to manage stress, to understand what happens when the stress mechanism turns on and what to do about it. The secrets to, to uh, living a happy life I think has a lot to do with managing the stress of our lives but also learning the mental behaviors that, have, that compensate for the stress response. So there's all kinds of fascinating new research uh, in positive psychology that say that the positive emotions, hopefulness, gratitude, generosity, optimism, those things actually exist in the body, in, in the mind, in order to, to bring our body minds back into balance. So that we not only need to turn down the stress response, we've got to turn up these positive emotions so that we actually feel happy on a day-to-day -day basis. And that's really the secret, I think, to a happy life. Well, I think the most common barrier is thinking that is going to be easy. <laughs> so that what happens is when we mess up, which we will inevitably do, we give up. And that's really, really uh, what the problem is. It's that we don't understand that it takes a lot of practice to create change that we need to do the new thing over and over and over again before it becomes even remotely as automatic as the other thing that we've been doing. And so the difference between people who succeed at change 
and fail at change is this one thing. They don't turn goof ups into give ups. They say, okay, I messed up today, I ate a box of cookies, or I yelled at my kid, or I forgot to work out, and then they say, that doesn't mean anything about what tomorrow is, I'm gonna go back to the good new thing. That's really the secret. Well, the one piece of advice I have to leading a happy, balanced life is to understand that we actually need to train mentally just in the same way that we understand now we have to train physically in order to have a happy, healthy life. We also need to train mentally. We need to learn these techniques about dealing with stress and we need to learn how to cultivate the positive emotions so that we really can be happy in our lives. Otherwise, what we're doing is we're just kind of maintaining the status quo of our existence. We're kind of going through the motions, but what we can instead, if we really say, okay, I wanna learn these great new ways that science is now um, providing us to understand how we get to be happier, how we get to be healthier, then we can be really living vibrant lives.